commented on my video number 72 about legal name, lawsuits, trials, court comedy, that now it's possible to register properties or whatever on the blockchain, crypto innovation. It's not just a network for money. Bitcoin is the first type of cryptocurrency. Satoshi Nakamoto. And just now I am listening to another uh, video of the Light Workers Media is the name of the channel. And uh, this just now the video I'm listening. Kate's kids carve with Gaido. Gaia and um, just want to mention that it's astonishing how often they mention the soul. It's uh, just because I created Soul Trade Gain and uh, soon I'll translate uh, the video of this same channel. Um, Babylon is fallen is maybe the most important video. Now in the future, I really want to try to translate every, try to remember to translate every phrase into at least Spanish. Ahora en el futuro quiero por lo menos intentar de traducir cada frase en español. If I forget, please remember me. Si lo olvido, por favor, recordadmelo. Justo hace dos horas salió un nuevo video, hoy el 3 de noviembre de 2014. Um, just today, um, two hours, uh, on November 3rd. Um, the first uh, just a new video. Um, primer cajero Robocoin de España para compra venta de Bitcoin. De su nueva versión Wallet Online. Um, el, the first um, ATM of Robocoin in Spain. Uh, to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin with the new version online wallet. El nombre del canal is Bitcoin Spain, the name of the channel on YouTube is Bitcoin Spain. El título Desayuno Informativo, Medios de Comunicación y Blogs, Bitcoin Spain and One Shot Hotels. Asisten Félix Moreno, un trader and entusiasta de, de Bitcoin. Víctor Escudero, un trader and entusiasta de Bitcoin. Enrique de Solís, One Shot. Pedro Flores, Paid Mobile, José L. Vares, Avatar BTC, Antonio L. García, Bitcoin Spain. Tenemos una cosa que conoce muy poca gente, que es la calle Bitcoin, y ahora mismo es la calle Bitcoin más larga de Europa. Eh, muchas de las empresas que hay aquí representadas han sido patrocinadoras de la calle Bitcoin, y bueno, es en la calle Serrano y alrededores hay 25 comercios, todos muy cerca uno de otros, incluido el Hotel One Shot, incluido varios de los restaurantes que ha mencionado Antonio. La mayoría de los comercios que aceptan Bitcoin lo hacen en Internet, entonces ya ahí creo que... A, a... In uh, Madrid, there is uh, one street uh, with the name Bitcoin, and there are a lot of uh, yeah business. Um, actually, the the longest uh, Bitcoin street of Europe in Madrid, Spain. Unos días sacaron la estadística: 97.000 páginas web que aceptan Bitcoin. La moneda más utilizada para el comercio electrónico ahora mismo ya está adelantando, perdón, va, está en segundo lugar después de PayPal, perdón, pero, pero el caso...
esto es que la mayoría están online, siempre es algo electrónico. Pero este año que viene vamos a empezar a ver la fusión del, del comercio online y del inter, internet en el móvil con el comercio a pie de calle. Y en eso Bitcoin en España está siendo pionero. Vamos a estar aquí seis meses antes que Apple Pay o que cualquiera de las monederos virtuales que quieren lanzar Vodafone, BBVA, toda esta gente. Y además es una plataforma totalmente abierta. Tanto cualquier comercio que pueda participar puede usarlo, como cualquier usuario puede usarlo sin pagar comisiones a nadie y de forma totalmente abierta y descentralizada. Just want to mention one more channel important about Bitcoin. Uh, solo quiero mencionar un canal de YouTube más uh, que es importante sobre Bitcoin. The name of the channel is World Bitcoin Network of James D. Angelo. Nombre es World Bitcoin Network de James D. Angelo. And maybe one of the most important videos is intro uh, to paper wallets and cold storage. Y tal vez el video más importante es intro to paper wallets and cold storage. Just now, especially around uh, minute 70, uh, sorry, 17. Um, just will paste uh, a little part of this video. Uh, especialmente alrededor en del minuto 17 voy a poner una parte. The beauty of paper wallets is almost anywhere you put it in your house, it's going to be safer than on your computer that's online. All right, hackers are coming for your bitcoins. As the price of Bitcoin goes up exponentially, as the more users are adopting Bitcoin exponentially, you're going to get thieves coming into the Bitcoin space exponentially. And the most thieves that you're going to see, and we've already seen tons of them, are running malware. They're hacking into people's computers and they're stealing their Bitcoins. And clearly, if I generated this paper wallet on a computer that wasn't attached to the Internet and never attached to the Internet, it would be impossible for any computer hacker to get at this paper wallet and get the information off of it. Okay, so that's one thing to start thinking about. I did mine on a computer right now that's attached to the internet as sloppy as can be. Again, I like sloppy wallets and that was one of our ideas to create a sloppy paper wallet. As you start thinking forward, think about doing it on a computer perhaps you gave to your mom that never connects to the internet and can't connect to the internet, right? And then you can download this bit address software, right? And I like bit address because if you say save, right? File, save page as, it'll save it as one file. Very few web pages, if you say save page as, will save as one file. Bitaddress.org wrote the software so it saves as one file. And you can put the bit address software on any USB device or anything. And now you can open it up on your mom's old computer that can't connect to the internet and you can generate your paper wallets there. They're a lot safer, okay? We're done with paper wallets. Now we're gonna move to cold storage. Really the same basic idea. Somehow you've gotta put what you put on this paper wallet onto this, okay? And the more secure you do it, the more you do it on computers that aren't connected to the internet, the more secure it will be. So what am I gonna do? To put this on here well it's pretty simple i'm just going to take that file that i just printed and i'm going to copy it to this that's cold storage really they're both cold storage but people like to call this paper wallets and people like to call this cold storage so i'm going to take the file i just printed where i copied the private key and just drag it onto my usb drive okay so i'm going to take the file i just printed and I'm gonna copy it onto my USB drive. Now, clearly there's a million ways to be more secure than what I just did. You can encrypt the file that I just printed. You can do other things to protect it. But as soon as I put that file onto this and I erase it from my computer, I'll have created my first level of cold storage. And once again, I'm connected to the internet. This is a sloppy cold storage wallet but I highly recommend getting started with cold storage and paper wallets with very small amounts of money and very sloppy wallets. And then after the ideas and how to print up your paper wallets and how to do your cold storage sink in, 
then you're ready to move more and more money over. But you got to really move slow with this stuff because mistakes, right? If you copy the wrong file or you didn't put the private key on there or if you printed it up wrong, you're going to lose your money. Okay, so this video is just an introduction to the ideas. And as you start thinking more and more about how they work, well, then you'll start thinking more and more how to make it more secure. And we'll make more videos on that. But this is just the beginning. So let's go to the desktop. Okay, and there's my file that I printed up and it's got the private key right there. Juicy private key. Maybe I'll put a little money in that and see who takes it off. If they'll tell me they took it off, that'll be fun. Um, but I'm going to put in my USB drive or my wife's USB drive. And there it is. And now I'm going to take this file and I'm going to copy it here. Boop. Done. Okay, now I'm going to delete this file right here. Boop. Gone. And I'll empty my trash. And then I'll eject this. And now I have a copy of that Bitcoin wallet right here. And I could store this, put this away. Ideally, what you'll do is maybe you'll use a few of these, all right? Because what if this gets a little buggy over time or some water spills on it or Coke spills on it? What a lot of people do is they start sticking these things into safe deposit boxes. But again, you're going to probably want to encrypt it, right? And my favorite way of doing this is you, you encrypt your file, right? And you keep the password for the file on here at your house, comfortably, okay? And you leave the encrypted file in your safe deposit box. That way, if you die, right, your family could end up at least getting your Bitcoins. And hopefully you'd be happy about that. But that's just one recommendation. And we'll go over some more of these recommendations later. But we have one copy now of that Bitcoin private key, which is all you really need on this, okay? And if we notice, well, we never got rid of it on the bit address org.page. But this is JavaScript. It's all client side, all right? They're not generating these addresses on their server. We've looked at the software pretty heavy, and we'll probably do a video about all the software that's in there. It's all standard stuff. It's long. It's a little confusing. SHA-256, RipeMD, and all that. But eh, that's the way it is. Now, to get rid of this, I can just press Generate New Address. Now it's gone. Okay, so if you had sent money to it and you hadn't copied it or you don't have a good copy of it, that money is probably going to be gone forever. So let's just do this all one more time really quick so you can see it all bang, bang, bang. Okay, generate new address. Okay, 19ZXXVT. That's cool to me. Do a screen capture. Okay, make sure you get both the private key and the public key. But I also like to copy the private key here. OK, and there's ways to hide your private key, even on your paper, paper wallet, using this BIP38 protocol. And we're going to do a video on that. It's genius stuff. OK, but we're going to copy the private key. We're making sloppy wallets today. Copy. Then we're going to go to the desktop. Boom. We're going to see the screen capture that we just did. I'm going to replace the name with my private key. Pretty sloppy wallet, but it's handy. Then I'm going to open it. Drag it down so you can see it, right? Here's my private key. Here's my public address. Here's the private key again. And then I'm going to hit print. And I'm making a brand new paper wallet. Okay, and here's my paper wallet. Here's the public address I can send money to. Here's the private key I want to hide from everybody's eyes on earth. And then you can staple it, tape it, you can hide it behind your dresser, do whatever you want. And now we're going to put that onto cold storage. So we've got the file on your desktop. You insert your USB, wait for it to come up, and then you copy that file over. Okay? Then you delete it off your computer. If you don't delete it off your computer and your computer's connected to the internet, it's not cold storage. That's hot storage. It's warm storage, right? Hackers can get in. So remember, the idea is to take your Bitcoins and put them in a place where no malware can get to, okay? No malware in history can jump off the computer and start grabbing the information off this paper, at least once it's folded. Remember, your cameras and stuff on your computer could see them, okay? Now we'll take out our USB drive, and we'll put that in a place where no one can find it or no one can get it. And ideally, 
make a few of them. Remember, Bitcoin's great because you can back up your money, but Bitcoin's also dangerous because you can back it up. And if you have it in five places, well, it gets a little freaky. Okay, okay, so here's the address we just officially put in cold storage and it will only go on cold storage when I get rid of it on my screen and I can't go back. And notice you can't hit back in bit address. This is JavaScript, right? It's not gonna remember what you've done, okay? So you can generate lots of new addresses, but you can't go back to the ones you just missed. Now, before we go, we're gonna do just one thing. I'm gonna to go to wallet details, and I'm gonna go back to our original SQUA address, because I had copied the private key and it was in memory. Okay, so it was unofficially cold storage. And now I'm gonna copy that public address, and I'm gonna go back to Bitcoin address and see if the money we sent is actually arrived into that address yet. Okay, here we go. So you paste it right in there in the blockchain and you see if any action has happened at all. Okay, and there it is. There's the transaction I sent to 17 Squa. Blah, 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 blah. I sent a dollar, now it's worth 99 cents. I lost a penny. Okay, it's an unconfirmed transaction. We talk about that in other videos. But the beauty is that transaction will be on the blockchain for all of time. So as long as Bitcoin exists, you'll be able to paste this transaction number in, right? This is the transaction number right here and see the exact time, date and amount that I sent to this paper wallet that's sitting right here. Where is it? Okay. Boom. And there's the private key. Okay. Hope that helps. Hope that gets you started thinking about cold storage and paper wallets. Don't be intimidated by them, but definitely don't start and jump in and go all the way. Don't send 100 Bitcoins to your first paper wallet, okay? Don't put 100 Bitcoins in your first attempt at cold storage. What you want to do is put money in your paper wallets, take money out of your paper wallets, play around with paper wallets for a week or so before you start doing the real serious stuff. And by then, hopefully, we'll have made some more serious videos as well to be able to walk you through the next steps. Okay, so that's it. Sloppy wallets, they're great. Very important to have around, leave them all over the place, right? Sloppy wallets, let the burglars come in and have no idea what they're doing, okay? One way to throw off burglars is have a billion wallets around. That'll take them a while to just sort them all out. And if you printed up a billion wallets, which you can, you still wouldn't have used one of the same addresses that's ever been generated phenomenal math that's going on okay please remember to like subscribe comment do all those things that you do we'll see you at the next video the next video will move deeper into this world of security very very important stuff with bitcoin it's the one place where you're going to feel all on your lonesome okay and it is a lonely place bitcoin security is a lonely place and you have to take it serious <whistles> see you at the next video and you are welcome on my Facebook pages, CCBP, Canarias Crypto Bitcoin P2P. Estáis bienvenidos en mis páginas de Facebook, Canarias Crypto Bitcoin P2P. And uh, the German one, but I speak uh, the three languages uh, over there too. DCBP, Deutschland, Crypto, Bitcoin, P2P. Y también el, el, la página para Alemania, Deutschland, Crypto, Bitcoin, P2P. In my video number 74, I explained it in the three languages. In my video número 74, lo he explicado en los tres idiomas.